Welcome to this very wet Wednesday. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods wrapping up the month of January with a dangerous storm that's actually increasing our flood risk. As you can see right behind me here, releases from Oroville have begun. Take a look at some of the video that was shot earlier today. This is from the California Department of Water Resources showing some of the water that is now flowing out of Lake Oroville. It started at 8 o'clock this morning. The Department of Water Resources saying we got to keep in line with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers flood control releases. That means making capacity in the or at the dam for all of the water and the snow melt that is moving downstream. About 76% capacity right now. And again, the releases into the Feather River are at 12,000 cubic feet per second. This is all to make sure that downstream communities stay safe and that that reservoir doesn't get too full. This is the largest storage facility in the state water project, providing flood protection while also supporting environmental and water delivery to meet the needs of 27 million Californian. So an impressive sight right there as those releases continue to take place as we prepare for multiple atmospheric rivers this week. Let's take a look at some of the storms that we'll be tracking. We've got two on tap here. This is going to be our Wednesday and Sunday storm. So the first of which has already begun. The atmospheric river forecast right here is going to be in the scale on a two. So it's a moderate one providing both beneficial but also some hazardous conditions. And then we'll follow that up with another one on Sunday. And that one gives us a one two punch here as we head into the beginning of February. When we just look at the atmospheric river scale, Scale, you can see a moderate atmospheric river, again, mostly beneficial, somewhat hazardous. Last year, we got one of the exceptional ones coming through, which was primarily hazardous, and it really set the stage for so much water coming into our waterways. We're going to take a deeper dive into some of those reservoir numbers as well as our snowpack in just a minute. Want to get to this first weather system, though, coming on shore right now. This will not only affect Northern California, but also into Central and Southern California, heading into our Wednesday overnight hours and Thursday. The main plume of moisture actually hits us with the heaviest rain and strongest winds from about 8 to 9 o'clock tonight for the Central Valley, and then it will start to shift its way southward overnight. We're also looking at a lot of changing conditions in this era. Initially, our snow line pretty high. Winter storm warning now in effect. For some of us, that will continue through Friday at 10 a.m., including Douglas, El Dorado, Nevada, and Washoe counties. That was partially into the Nevada area. And then for much of the California side, it will continue until 4 a.m. on Saturday, including Calaveras, Placer, Plumas, and Shasta, extending all the way into extreme northern California. Flood watch also in effect throughout the valley and the foothills until Friday morning for Butte, Placer, Sacramento, and Yolo counties, also included in that, will be parts of San Joaquin County and Solano as we move towards the coast. Our wind advisory in place, that will continue through early Thursday morning, although most of the strongest winds will be primarily over by the time we get to about midnight. We've already seen peak wind gusts up to about 40 miles per hour in some places throughout the valley, near 50 miles per hour for parts of the foothills, including Placerville. And we'll see some very gusty winds in this year right now at about 35 to 45 miles per hour. Here's that line of peak wind gusts coming in right about 8 o'clock. And you can see a very distinct line of demarcation at 8 we're already done with the strongest winds across the coast, whereas the Central Valley, and you can see the contours here with those strong southeast winds really starting to ramp up. Behind it, we get the colder air working in, so as we kind of push this line off to the east, we'll continue to see colder air work in and also that snow line come down. One thing to focus on is the mother load south of Highway 50 still has that pulse of some strong winds coming in at about 11 o'clock, and then we get another little surge right around 4 a.m. with some strong gusts. So don't uh, put your guard down quite yet. We could have the potential for some power outages periodically throughout the night, as well as a lot of tree branches down, not to mention any of the weakened trees might come down as well, especially as the ground starts to get saturated, which we're certainly experiencing right now. Minor flooding possible for the roadways for the morning commute, but the wind 
will be done for the morning commute. Here's a look at our radar as we take a look at our early evening hours for the Northern California section from Yuba City stretching through Modesto. So a slice generally from about the central Sacramento Valley through the northern San Joaquin Valley coming in from the coast and we've seen waves of these heavier bands of rain move through. Snow continues for the Sierra, but the snow line has been generally higher above the passes, it's now starting to lower. I've been checking those chain controls. It's undoubtedly going to change for tonight. Right now, they're just checking trucks for chains at Applegate on I-80. No restrictions on Highway 50, but again, I wouldn't anticipate that being the case overnight tonight. We've got little pockets of some heavier rain coming in right now all the way through the valley. And then again, right in that 80-50 corridor, that snow line has been generally starting to come down the hill, but we have some pockets that actually are seeing some dry weather. Here's a look at Donner Summit. Now, uh, traffic has been moving fairly smoothly. This is along I-80. That's going to be the peak right there at about 7,200 feet, just to put a rough estimate on how high that is. You can see there is a truck moving pretty smoothly right now. Visibility not the greatest, especially as we transition out of some of that warmer air into the colder air. We'll have a lot of visibility issues for tonight, but does appear that traffic moving okay. This is a little bit lower down the hill. This is at Kingvale, and I have been seeing some periods of some snow coming in on and off on our westbound commute there. Again, traffic moving fairly smoothly. You can see a little bit of spray coming off behind the trail of those trucks and cars as they're moving on through. This is a look at South Lake Tahoe. This is where we have, it's called the kind of the Y, where 89 and 50 meet up. As you head off to the east, you head towards Heavenly and South Lake Tahoe. And then if you head northbound, then you head more so into uh, more into the Tahoe Basin area. So everything moving smoothly, not much in the way of precipitation right now. Everything falling at Lake Tahoe is indeed rain. Our temperatures are holding at about 40 to 45 degrees. That will continue to fluctuate for tonight. It will be coming down the hill. So a lot of slick snow covered roads overnight tonight through early tomorrow. Talked about the poor visibility, the travel delays, chain controls undoubtedly will be going up overnight. And then we get into the possible road closures, especially once we start to deal with accumulation, either spin outs from traffic just moving too fast in those conditions or Caltrans just needed to do their job to get the roads cleared. And so periodically they'll close those roads just so that the snow plows can get in there, clear off the roads to make uh, travel passable once again. The worst of it actually comes in overnight tonight here. The heaviest snow right in this pocket here Wednesday into Thursday. You can see how again our snow line started off at about 7,000 feet, drops to 5,000 feet, and then we get into Friday and Saturday where we really have a lot of cold air working in. At that time frame, we're looking at that snow line moving down to about 4,000 to almost 3,000 feet. Now, the caveat here is that on Saturday, there's not going to be a whole lot of moisture left behind. So seeing a whole lot of accumulation at 3000 feet is not really likely. But our winter storm severity index continues to show those extreme impacts into the end of the work week here, especially for the central and southern Sierra. So folks that are trying to maybe do some skiing that don't normally get to do so in the southern Sierra, just really dangerous conditions right now until we get past this series of storms. 80-50 corridor in that Tahoe Basin here. Here's 80, here's 50. It's kind of that slice right there. Looking at major impacts, a little bit less or so as we head our way northward, but the extreme impacts certainly hitting parts of Central and Southern California. In terms of excessive rainfall, the brunt of this is coming through Wednesday into Thursday. So periods of heaviest rain will be in the northern part of the state on Wednesday night into early Thursday and possible flooding. We're going to shift that a little bit farther to the south here as we head deeper into our Thursday forecast. So all the way from Los Angeles through San Diego, we are expecting a risk of excessive rainfall coming in again, mainly on Thursday for Southern California. Precipitation since midnight, these numbers don't look super dynamic. But the rain is currently falling, so we're just now starting to put the rain in the bucket. We only started to see the rain about noon for Sacramento. It came in earlier for the coast, so San Francisco closing in on about a half an inch of rain. Santa Rosa already over an inch, and these totals, again, will continue to go up. Heaviest rain comes in at 8. You can see the, how the contours are showing the yellow and the orange, indicating heavier, heavier reflectivity, stronger reflectivity with our radar 
estimates here. And then that will move its way eastward, but still in place at 11 o'clock. So when you think about the duration of 8 to 11 o'clock for three hours, getting areas of moderate and at sometimes heavy rain, it's likely the creeks, the streams, low-lying areas, flood-prone regions, we'll see some minor to moderate flood issues by the time we get to almost into midnight. Some of the drainage areas really have a tough time just getting rid of that water. The morning commute could be impacted. The one thing that I want to point out is we're not going to have a whole lot of rain during the morning commute. That doesn't mean we're not going to have the flood issues continuing through our Thursday. As far as the active rainfall, though, it looks like it will be confined into the foothills by tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for the morning commute. And then again, that snow line will continue to drop lots of changing conditions for the Sierra. Once we start to see those pockets of clearing and that cold air working in, instability will grow. A slight chance of seeing some thunderstorm action during our Thursday afternoon, and that will expand all the way to the coast and in through Southern California, even parts of the desert getting in on that slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow, mainly in the form of hail, heavy downpours, lightning. Uh, as far as funnel clouds, there's really slim risk. Anytime we see this active weather, though, in California, this is our funnel cloud season. So if we do happen to get it, this would be the time that we do see it. Here's the bigger view of this storm and a big plume of moisture again working its way in from the Pacific. There is the load that's driving the action, that counterclockwise circulation, and it's going to continue to pull this inland. Now, the interesting part of this storm started off warm. As the cold air works in, we'll see those snow levels drop. The only reason why I put that out there is keep in mind we've got another storm due in. It's going to have the exact opposite it's going to come in cold and then start to warm up towards the tail end of it. Unfortunately, that's not the best news for us because that could mean some melting of some snow at some lower elevations, and we don't necessarily want that. That tends to elevate our flood risk, but we'll get to that in just a minute. First of all, this first storm, anywhere from about 1 to 24 inches of snow, generally speaking. Now, we'll get some pockets in there, especially in those extreme areas of the winter uh, storm severity index that we could see up to about 3 feet of snow. Again, those are very isolated pockets and generally at the highest peaks, which are in the central Sierra. So a place like Mammoth could get some pretty decent snow from the storm system coming in. Total rainfall by the time we get to about noon on Friday, and that's when we'll see the bulk of it come to an end, will be anywhere from about one to two inches of rain in the valley. It's gonna be a mix for places like Pollock Pines. So yes, 2.2 .2 inches of precipitation, not necessarily all rain, not necessarily all snow. Active weather timeline, we've got it in the red for tonight for Wednesday. We'll bring it into the orange, more moderate uh, zone for Thursday, just because we'll still see some periods of heavy rain and some pockets around some of the thunderstorm activity, plus the snow level will come down. That will mean a lot of weather hazards continuing to grow, particularly for the Sierra. Now, Friday, still some scattered showers, slight chance of a thunderstorm. Saturday, finally, mostly a dry forecast. Not completely dry, but a mostly dry forecast. Here's a look at the atmospheric rivers and kind of the water vapor that's in the atmosphere. How much can be transported from the Pacific? Because that's really the definition of what we look for in those atmospheric rivers. And you can see how the moisture continues to stream its way in from the Pacific. Now we've got another line due in on Sunday. Most notable, though, is how much farther south it is directed. And that's why Southern California, especially as we drive deeper into the forecast, could be seeing a more elevated risk of some flooding come the end of the weekend and into the start of the work week. It will be a situation we will definitely want to watch. Plus, not to mention, we've got the cold air in place. Will there be snow on the grapevine? Especially when it hits on a Sunday or early Monday when we start to get things moving again throughout the state. Could be not the best situation for Southern California. Thursday, another uh, line of storms due in. That active weather pattern will continue. All right, let's take a look back at Oroville and the flood control and why the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has that threshold of when we need to start releasing water from the Department of Water Resources that coming out, although it is a state water project there. You can see those numbers starting to climb here. Here we are. January 1st, this teal area, that is our average for the uh, capacity and the storage for Lake Oroville. The total capacity is up here at the top, and we're pretty far from that. But once we get to the spring melt, we have to have enough space in there for the snow that's currently up in the Sierra 
to melt its way down and move through the Feather River and fill Lake Oroville. Now, when we take a look at last year, this is what I was talking about. That uh, reservoir was completely full. So we are coming off of a year where we have a lot of water in the watershed. Some of those reservoirs and their downstream rivers do not have enough capacity that they can automatically open up these gates and just let a ton of water out and be completely fine. It takes a while to work its way through the system. So flood managers and water managers have to do a really careful inspection of how much water they can keep in and how much they need to let out to protect, again, the downstream communities from getting inundated with too much water. Here's a look at some of the other reservoirs that we like to keep a track of. Shasta being our biggest one, that's gonna be the headwater of the Sacramento River, 79% full right now, 122% of average. Folsom's at 55% full. And that's on the American River. As we take a look at New Malonis, 143% of average, about 80% full. That being true as well for Don Pedro and San Luis over towards the coast at 61% full. Since I mentioned rivers, just wanted to give a quick check on those rivers. We will be at monitor stage for the Sacramento River upstream of downtown Sacramento. Everything, of course, flowing its way southward here. So we will see some rises on places like the I Street Bridge, where we have the confluence of the American and the Sacramento River. It can get really dicey there right at the I Street Bridge, but right now, Crest looks well below flood stage and certainly even below monitor stage. We'll be watching it because again, we have that second storm coming in, but right now it does look like we will remain well below that threshold. Statewide precipitation continuing to see these numbers grow since the beginning of the water year last October 1st. Uh, right now we're above average for Stockton and Modesto. We'll continue to grow those numbers and as well as Eureka below average for some of these other monitoring locations. But again, these numbers will go up overnight tonight through tomorrow and very likely by the time we start off February, we'll have a really decent look at uh, seeing those numbers not not only at but potentially above average. As far as our snow water water equivalent, we had that second snow survey of the year yesterday, about 50% of average for our statewide snow water equivalent. Right now, we're still not in a super great shape, uh, but given that last year was so wet and historic in some places, especially in the central and southern Sierra, this isn't too concerning, especially because we've been able to pull in some of those atmospheric rivers to get the new year started. If we hadn't had that, these numbers would be a little more concerning, but we're at 50% of average to date. That number undoubtedly, again, will go up with all the rain and snow that we're looking at coming in. As far as our Wednesday evening, the heaviest stuff coming in, we've got the snow all the way on the Sierra spine. I think it's really interesting what's happening here too. By Thursday, watch how that snow line com comes and goes, but then we get some really cold air and that snow line starts to come down. We'll still have that chance of thunderstorms coming in for our Friday forecast. And uh, again, Friday evening, that snowfall will be pretty low in elevation, down to about 4,000 feet. Heading up the hill, it's going to be probably slow going <laughs> on Friday. I know a lot of people want to get the jump on all that fresh snow coming in. By Sunday, we start to watch this ne next atmospheric river. But again, uh, keep in mind that low that we've been tracking for today is well north of us. By the time we get into that Sunday storm, this low is much farther to the south. So we'll see much bigger impacts for central and southern California potentially for that next storm in line. We're heading into that likely wetter forecast for the middle of February, which very much falls in line with what we were expecting for much of this year, a very typical El Nino pattern with the storm track riding south of us, a wetter Southern California. Interesting that it just took a little bit longer to get here, but you can see with a strong El Nino how those conditions generally favor a wetter Southern California. Just as El Nino starts to lose its strength, we're just now seeing a more uh, key signature of what we would see in a strong El Nino pattern. So we'll continue to monitor that for Southern California. Looking at those weather hazards again earlier, oh, it was about last week at this time, this was very much flipped. We saw some of the higher risk in Northern California. Now we're starting to see that shift ever so slightly to the south as that storm track starts to favor more of Southern California with that second storm coming in. That's not to say that we won't get some impacts for Northern California, but it does appear Southern California may be in some of those higher impact zones. As far as our snowfall as well, we're looking at a slight risk of a weather hazard developing throughout this year and parts of Shasta 
but the higher risk category will be shifting to the Intermountain West. Wind, we'll still be looking at that for that 8 to 14 day period, but again, it is favoring Southern California to be in that higher risk zone. As you can see here, we'll put our future cast into motion. We get this first storm ripping through, kind of opening up the storm door for us for that second one to make landfall on Sunday. We'll continue to watch snow and rain develop throughout the entire state all the way through Monday. So that time frame is going to be pretty dicey here coming on the heels of our first storm system that with that second one in line by next Thursday. There's the next one coming in. It's a little bit colder, which is some good news. We want that snowpack to be nice and healthy and uh, low enough that we don't get the runoff coming off too soon down the hill. Highs tomorrow drop into the 30s for this year, a 40s and 50s for the foothills. And then we get into the 50s throughout the coast. We're not going to see too much fluctuation with our afternoon highs for tomorrow. We'll see a bigger drop come a little bit deeper into the week. Highs in the 50s to near 60 throughout the valley with that five day forecast showing Saturday's our day to enjoy some peaks of sunshine because we're right back at it for Sunday into Monday for the mountains, the hills, and the coast again Sunday we'll see that mix of rain and snow for the foothills and then it will turn to all rain on Monday as some of that warmer air works its way in chance of thunderstorms here Thursday and Friday mostly dry on Saturday and then we're right back at it early next week with on and off rain and more atmospheric rivers to track.